As a wildlife filmmaker and educator, I've spent most of my life exploring God's creation. From climbing up mountains, to canoeing through wetlands, and hiking into forests, my love for God's creation has taken me on many outdoor adventures. In each episode, you'll come along with me as we explore this great big world God has made. I hope you're ready for an adventure. I'm Peter Schremer, and this is Hike and Seek. Hey everybody, I'm Peter Schremer and welcome today. I wanted to share with you a little bit about some of my favorite animals in the entire world, reptiles and amphibians. These are the animals that really got me into God's creation when I was very young. When I was about 11 years old, I decided that I wanted to learn more about the world of reptiles and amphibians. So I went to the public library and I went up to the second floor, left the kids section, went all the way up to the adult section because I wanted some serious science books. And I went to the section on reptiles and amphibians and was just in awe of all the books out there that could help me learn more about this amazing world that God has made and these incredible creatures that we call reptiles and amphibians. So I took a stack that I could barely see over the top of down to the librarian. And I took so many, in fact, on the same topic that she said I had to put some back, which I did reluctantly. But I took home a nice set of books to get me started diving into this exciting world of reptiles and amphibians. So today we are going to be taking a look at some that I have with me. And, uh, but first we're gonna be talking about amphibians and then we'll get to reptiles in just a second. So what is an amphibian? All right, well amphibians have smooth or bumpy skin. They don't usually have claws and teeth, but some do. And all of them need water. Now not all of them live in water their entire life, but many of them need to come back to water to lay eggs. So water is a key part of being an amphibian. So repeat after me, amphibians need water. There we go, amphibians need water, remember that. Now, there are three groups of amphibians here. Here they are. We have frogs and toads. We have newts and salamanders, and we have Sicilians, which in this case are not people from Sicily. They are an amphibian that looks kind of like an eel or a snake. And so these are the different groups of amphibians, and then there are different kinds of frogs and toads and newts and salamanders and Sicilians that would have gone on the ark that are included in these groups. So. Amphibians are really neat animals. I love frogs and toads. I hope that you have some toads maybe in your backyard or a park down the street. I loved catching toads when I was very small. Now, I have a really, a really odd uh, amphibian with me today that I want to share with you. So we're going to put the Sicilian away. We actually, people don't know a ton about Sicilians. So if you want to go into the realm of herpetology, that's the study of reptiles and amphibians, you might uh, want to learn more about Sicilians because we don't know a lot. We know that some live in the ground and some live in the water, and, and there's a lot more to be studied about them. They live in Central and South America, and uh, I'm going to put that guy away for right now. And then there's the newts and the salamanders. This is a spotted salamander, and uh, they kind of look like lizards, but like I said before, they have smooth skin or bumpy skin, depending on what kind it is, and, uh, but they're not, they're not lizards. These are amphibians. They need water. All right, I'm going to put this down here. And then, like I said, the frogs and the toads. This is a bullfrog, and uh, none of these, of course, are real. These are my fake amphibians of science, and, uh, but I'm about to bring out the real deal, okay? So with that, we're going to bring out our first amphibian here. And here we go. Are you ready? Here is a Pac-Man frog. Now look at that guy. What a weird-looking creature. He is mostly mouth as you can tell, big mouth. And this is one of the few amphibians who has teeth. So be careful where you put your fingers because they can bite. So this guy is a cool guy. They're called Pac-Man frogs because, well, they kind of look like Pac-Man with very large mouths. And also because like Pac-Man, they'll eat just about anything that goes in front of them that they can fit in their mouth. These guys are from South America. That is their native land. And a couple fun facts about Pac-Man frogs. Oh, you want to hop away, huh? Put them back here. There we go. The uh, Pac-Man frog, what they do, when they get, when their habitat gets dry, 
Their outer skin also gets dry and rough and protects their inner skin to keep them moist because they need that water. Now, when it gets wet again around them in their environment, they will shed that dry, rough skin and they'll eat it. Yuck. But apparently it helps them uh, store some nutrients and, uh, and redigest it. So that works, I guess. So these guys also are sit and wait predators, which means he'll do just exactly what he's doing right now. He's going to sit and wait. And when some stupid little bug comes walking along, he will eat it. Or in the case of a Pac-Man frog, he may eat a bird or a mouse when they get a little bigger. When they get larger, they will get this big. And so this is a small Pac-Man frog, but the Pac-Man frog will get a lot larger, large enough to eat mice. All right. Now, some other fun facts about the Pac-Man frog. They are sit and wait predators. They'll eat mice, they'll eat birds, they'll eat all these things. And he doesn't hop very far as you can see. They're not big hoppers. They are, <laughs> they're kind of sluggish hoppers and they're on the heavy side. <laughs> they're more like pushers. There we go, over here. All right. Now, Pac-Man frogs are predators, which means they eat small animals. And that happened because of the fall in Genesis. Because sin entered the world, animals started eating each other, which is why this one is a predator. But originally, there were no animals that were eating other animals. In captivity, Pac-Man frogs as pets will live to be about 15 years. All right, so we're going to put him back in and we're going to start talking about reptiles, okay? So he's going to go back in his little container down here. There we go. All right, so now let's talk about reptiles for a minute. Now, reptiles include several different categories. Let's see what we got here. You have snakes. I like that we got snakes. You have tortoises and turtles. You have different types of lizards. And you have crocodiles, alligators, and caimans. And so the world of reptiles is different from the world of amphibians. Reptiles are actually a far more diverse group of animals, and they can live in a lot of different environments. Even though every animal needs water, reptiles do not need water like amphibians do. You have some like tortoises, they live in the desert their entire life where there's hardly any water. And you have lizards that do the same thing, so, and snakes. And so there's just a whole bunch of different types of animals in the reptile world, and different, especially different kinds of them that have very different lifestyles. Some live in fresh water, some live in salt water, some live away from water most of their life. So, but uh, they're really cool. And instead of like the amphibians that have smooth and bumpy skin, these guys have scaly skin, okay? This is one of the key factors. Many of them have claws or teeth, or like turtles and tortoises, they have like a beak kind of mouth. And uh, or in, like in some uh, snakes, they have fangs. And so these guys are a very interesting group. And I have some reptiles with me today. So we're going to put these guys away and we're going to bring out our first reptile. All right. Are you ready? Here we go. Here is. Guess what it is? Well, yes, it's a turtle. What kind of turtle, though? It is a box turtle. Box turtles are amazing creatures. They are very different and unique from other types of turtles. If you take a look at this guy's shell, all right, and you flip it up here, there is a hinge right there on the bottom part of this shell. And most turtles don't have that. This is very special. Now, if you push on this here, I'm going to get him to go inside, go inside, go inside, and he will shut it and go inside. He pulls up his shell just like a drawbridge and shuts it just like he's going inside a box, which is why they're called box turtles. And you can notice too, by the size of this shell and the shape of this shell, God has designed the shell to be in such a way that they can fit their whole body inside. Now I have a shell here of a painted turtle, and you can see that this painted turtle shell is much smaller and flatter than this shell. That's because painted turtles can't fit their entire body inside a shell. They just pull themselves in as best they can to protect themselves. Whereas box turtles can pull their whole body inside. And you can see how their body is designed to do that. Now, one thing that you have to remember about turtles is that they aren't inside of a shell. Their shell is their body. And so that shell is a, like a suit of armor, but they aren't hanging out inside of it. This is actually their body. And so their backbone runs all the way along the top here of their shell. And, uh, and that's embedded in their shell and makes it part of their entire body. 
Now, these guys are omnivores, which means that they eat both plants and animals. And like I said, omnivores and carnivores came about as a result of sin entering the world, entering at the fall in the Garden of Eden. And uh, reptiles and amphibians, including this guy, of course, were, in, were created on the sixth day. God created all the land animals and things that creep along the earth on day number six. Now, these guys are not designed for swimming. All right, if you stick this guy in water, he will not be able to swim. He will sink. He has no webbing. He has a heavy body. This guy is designed for the forest floor. And so, in fact, if you look on the top part here, it actually looks like light coming through the trees and falling onto the forest floor. That's really perfect camouflage for blending in with its habitat. Now look at this turtle shell. This shell is streamlined and it is perfect for swimming. Painted turtles are great swimmers. Box turtles don't swim at all. And so God has designed animals with different ways to defend themselves. Painted turtles are actually pretty fast. These guys, not so much, but these guys can pull themselves entirely inside their shell. Now, what's interesting too about box turtles, they live for a very long time. In fact, the box turtle that lived the longest in captivity lived to be 138. That's a long time. All right, well, we're going to put this guy back here because I have more to share with you. All right, next, we're going to bring out a lizard. Are you ready? Okay, so right next to me here, we got a really nice big lizard. Here he is, look at that guy, big boy. Now this is a bearded dragon. Bearded dragons are from Australia, and they're called bearded dragons because they have these beards. You see that? You got these beards right here, and when he gets upset, like he's getting a little upset right now, he is flexing those spines on his face, and he's making his beard look really big, and he's also flattening his body because he's not very happy. And so these guys, if you can look at their coloration, I want you to see his coloration. Do you think that this guy lives in a dry desert or a green jungle? Well, if you look at his coloration, it should be obvious that God designed them to live in a dry desert. The, this guy has the coloration to live in the arid area of the outback of Australia, where they're from. Now, even though these guys will, will hang out with you as a pet, they can actually run really fast and can run up to nine miles an hour. That's right. And if they really want to go quickly, they'll sometimes come up on their back two legs and run away that way too. So these guys are kind of interesting between blending in with their surrounding in the desert, using their spiny body to protect themselves and blend in with the desert as well, and being able to run away very quickly if they need to. This is as big as uh, bearded dragons get, and uh, they can make really good pets if you're interested in having one. If you have them as a pet, they can live to be 15 years old in captivity. All right, I think he's done enough here. We're going to put him back because I have another reptile to share with you. So off he goes back into his little container here. There we go. All right, are you ready for our last reptile? Okay, here we go. Drum roll. Here is a snake in a bag. That's right, inside this bag is a snake. And we're going to pull him out right now. He is in the bag, but he will soon be out of the bag. All right, here we go. Look at that. All right. Do you know what kind of snake this is? This is a ball python. Ball pythons are awesome. I love these types of snakes. They are part of the python kind, and uh, they're similar to boas, but boas live in South America and pythons live in Africa. This is the smallest type of python and is pretty common in the pet trade. Now these guys are not venomous. I would not be having a snake in front of me like this if it was venomous. These guys are constrictors. That means that they'll grab prey with their mouth and wrap their body around it and squeeze it, and that's how they catch their prey. So these guys are actually very similar to the Pac-Man frog in that they are both sit and wait predators. This guy will hang out and sit in the jungle at night waiting for prey to come by before he jumps out and grabs it. Now when it does jump out to grab it, it has heat sensors in his mouth. So that helps him target the prey like a mouse that might be going by. He'll be able to jump out and grab it with really good accuracy in total darkness because he can sense the heat from that mouse's body. 
A couple of fun facts about ball pythons is they have these beautiful patterns which actually help them blend in with their surroundings to hide from other predators that might want to eat it, but also to hide from the prey that it's trying to eat. And the patterns are all unique. There are no two ball pythons that look exactly alike. In captivity, ball pythons can live up to be 45 years old. So if you're going to buy a snake, make sure that you're in it for the long haul. Well, I love snakes, but you should never pick up a snake in the wild that you don't know. That's not a good idea because not all snakes are this friendly. But when you're in a zoo environment or it's a pet that is trusted, that's a totally fun experience to have. I hope you enjoyed joining me today looking at reptiles and amphibians. And uh, I'd love to hear from you. If you're watching this live on Facebook, I would love to hear of your reptile and amphibian pets. And if you don't have any, that's totally cool. Maybe you should look up what reptiles and amphibians live in your area and go on a hike and see what you can find out in God's creation. All right, well, that's it for today. I will see you guys next time.